Live, where news comes first. This is ABC7 Extra. It's Sunday, January 4th. Welcome to ABC7 Extra. Good evening. I'm Maria Garcia. In the next half hour, we're going to be talking to two men who are going to be making a lot of hefty decisions in the coming years that will affect you and your community and your tax dollars. Joining us tonight, the newly elected and sworn in El Paso County Commissioners Andrew Haggerty and David Stout. You can email us your comments, your questions now at abc7extra at kva.com. You can also reach us at 915 4 1775 on Twitter. Tweet me at Maria G ABC7 or use the hashtag ABC7 Extra. The two new commissioners begin their term in what's slated to be one of the busiest times for the county. The ongoing financial troubles between University Medical Center and the Children's Hospital finally completing the problem plagued construction of the sports park. 16 upcoming transportation projects. Creating a new budget office. Stout, a former television reporter and also former aide to Jose Rodriguez, the state senator, says he wants to tackle issues like the water at Ascarate Park. Andrew Haggerty appears to be of the same conservative fiscal perspective as his late an uncle, Dan Haggerty, who represented the same area for nearly 20 years before losing his battle with cancer. County Judge Veronica Escobar believes the court will work well together. To bring with them a great perspective. They're both very community oriented, and they both um, they both have really good hearts. And so I know that they're coming from a good place. We may not always agree, but that's the case in democracy, and that's the case with any governing body. But um, we involved them in some of our actions late last year, yesterday, uh, l last year. Um, so they were they were. Um, involved in the hiring of the new county administrator. I made sure to include them in important discussions and meetings and to invite them to those. So they've got kind of their feet wet a little bit. And from what I've seen of them, they are smart, they're committed. And joining us now are new commissioners David Stout and Andrew Haggerty. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank we you. appreciate it. I know it's past your bedtime, you were telling me. <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay, um, so let's start with, I think, one of the biggest issues that the county is facing right now, and that's the issues with UMC and the Children's Hospital, uh, the money troubles with the Children's Hospital, the supposed lack of communication between the UMC board and commissioners' court. Um, now, you all had been elected when all of this really started playing out in the fall. If you had been seated at that point, do you think you would have joined the commissioners who asked for the resignation of some of the members of the UMC board? Um, I guess I'll go first. You know, it's, it's easy to sit on the sidelines and say what you would or wouldn't do. We're not, I, personally, I'm not in the room yet. I'm not seeing the behind the scenes conversations. And more, more importantly, you got to remember that a lot of the decisions made by the UMC board, they're handcuffed by a contract that was signed 10 years ago. So, until you can get in there and look at it, it's hard to say what I would or would not do. Uh, it's easy to, to say what you do with half the information. Until you have the whole information, it, it's hard to really have that answer. But remember, a lot of the stuff that is done is done because of it's re contract and required to be done. Mm -hmm. So what was in the contract may have had something to do with why was, things were done. And if not, they shouldn't have been, been done. But until we have the whole information, and we still don't because we haven't had a real work day yet, it's hard to say. Right. Obviously, it was in, in the contract. Now, commissioners say, though, that the six-digit bonus that Jim Valenti received never came up during budget sessions, and that's something that should have came up, and they point that as an example of the lack of communication from the UMC board to commissioner's court. Do you think that that's a legitimate point? Do you think that there's a lack of communication from the board to the court? You know, from, from what I've heard, um, there, is, there is a lack of communication. I think um, uh, the conversations that I've had with, with other members of the, of, of the court, definitely, definitely, you know, they're, they're upset for a reason. And, um, you know, I, I think there was uh, some feeling of, of uh, that they, were, they had been lied to, possibly, or that there was, um, uh, you know, some, some misleading statements being made. And, and, you know, I think that their concerns are legitimate, um, but I think that we need to start moving forward and, you know, at some point put this behind us, figure out are we going to move forward with, with the leadership of Jim Valenti. I think, he's a, I think he's a smart gentleman. He thinks outside of the box. I just hope that um, at this point 
the relationship can be repaired between the members of the commissioner's court and, and of course, the leadership on the board and, and Mr. Valenti. Now, if you had been seated at the time that this was going on, do you think you would have joined the commissioners who asked for the resignation of people on the UMC board? It's hard for me to say that as well. You know, it, I, I'm going to echo what Andrew said. I wasn't privy to all the information that was going back and forth, um, and, and so it's really hard for me to, to actually say that I would have. Um, so it just sounds that, that, that there needs to be better communication. It sounds like um, there was a problem and the problem needs to be solved. Now, some members of the UMC board say that communication goes both ways and that there's some political posturing going on on the sides of commissioner's court. Um, absolutely. And, and I would say there's not. I mean, it, it definitely has to go both ways. To, to go in front of Cameron and say, I want your resignation before, if there's not any conversations done before that, may not be the best way to go about things. But what co conversations were there is, goes back to what we have is we weren't there to make those conversations. Um, if there was an email that said, I'm not going to give a bonus or get a bonus and then I get a bonus, I've definitely got a problem with that. Uh, was it in the budget? I haven't reviewed the multi-page budget to make sure. And uh, the email is a huge issue. The fact that he said, I'm not receiving a bonus, and then, oh, I got my bonus because it was in my contract. That's a problem. The big problem is it's created a huge lack of trust with the community. And that's something that is now our job to fix. You know, he said, she said, what would I do in the past? It's, I can't say because I wasn't there. Now we have to make sure we're fixing the community issue of trust with UMC. Right, and, and speaking of that, um, Jim Valenti has hinted that UMC may somehow take over the Children's Hospital. How that's legally possible is unclear at this point. Uh, there's also been talk that by some people that, that Children's grew too fast, that it hired too many doctors, created too much overhead uh, that wasn't sustainable by its revenue just yet, uh, though a lot of people would say that's arguable. Uh, what do you believe has gone wrong with the Children's Hospital and how do you move forward? Um, again, I, th I think, and I, I talked about this during the campaign, the problem with Children's Hospital is a lot of studies said it wasn't a viable option, but if you didn't vote for it, you hate children. So it was a very easy thing to get past, but a very difficult thing to truly fund. And uh, the issue we have is we need to see, is it worth having, when knowing you're going to lose millions of dollars every year, what is the health services that we're wanting in the area and is it going to balance out? And as far as are they going to absorb it, is it going, what's going to happen with it, those are questions that we need to get in there and talk to some experts before we make that call. So do you think that the Children's Hospital is not viable? I don't think that it was the best decision at the time we did it, personally, because of some of the studies that I saw s saying it's, it will work, but only if you do certain things. And then s really soon after it was built, the pay structures changed with the government and how they got paid. So that definitely hurt them as well. Uh, you know, but now we have this big building. We have uh, children who rely on services there. How do we move forward? You know, I, th I think a lot of the issues that, that you know, first of all, I, I don't, um, I'm not sure if, the, if people um, were meaning for the Children's Hospital to be viable within two to three years. I think um, we need to give it more time. Uh, and because of because of the the, the funding structure changes, um, those were those were not you know foreseeable. Um, I think when when it was when it was being uh, when when it was open or when it, when when it was being formed, and so you know it was kind of a perfect storm that came about. Um, of course, they got behind on some of the payments. I've you know I've, I've heard arguments that uh, that UMC should be more lenient on on um, the rent that they're charging and, and other services that they're charging the. The Children's Hospital, again, it's another it's it's another issue where you know I think we need to come together and, and find a solution. If um, you know if we can't find a, a third party to come in and take over the the Children's Hospital, then we definitely need to look at um, the options that we have, which which could be UMC overtaking the hospital. Um, and and I think maybe one of the best uh, forms of that would be, which is what been uh, which is what's been I think thrown around as well is is making it a 501c3 kind of like what um, the insurance company that the, that the county hospital has. Um, right, under the umbrella of UMC. Right, but there's the been umbrella. questions about the legality of that. Well, I mean, if, if it's not legal, then obviously we can't do it. But I've, that's something that, we nef that, that definitely needs to be uh, an avenue that we need to look at because 
Um, I don't think that we should close down this hospital. I think that um, there, there are uh, services that it provides that, that are so important to, to the families here in El Paso. It's such a medically underserved area. And, and you know, it would be just such a shame to see all of these specialists leaving this town um, because, you know, because of these issues that we're having. And I think that we should, I think that we should try to do our best to keep it here. Uh, Andrew, you said that it was a really easy thing to pass because obviously when you, when you speak about children in public... Exactly. It's one of those things where if you don't vote for it, you, you hate children. And so it's, it's something that got passed because of that, I think. And was it... Were we ready for it? I don't know, especially with Providence building a children's hospital of sorts on their own side. You know? Do you think that the people who pushed for its passage who are still in office right now, do you think that there should be some questions for them? You know, I don't know. And, and again, I don't, I'm not privy to all that information yet. I think, I think we wanted it. I think we wanted the growth. We wanted to see that whole medical uh, area grow. We wanted Texas Tech coming in. We wanted that whole compound. And it was a good way to bring in the doctors, to bring in the specialists, as, as Commissioner Stout said. The issue is El Paso has a good ability of wanting things and just trying to figure out how to fund it later. And that's the hard part we have now. You know, we, we're, we're still struggling with how we're going to pay for a baseball park, but we're already talking about building a $400 million soccer stadium. You know, it's, it's easy to say we want it, but how are we going to pay for it? And I think, unfortunately, this is one of those things we need to decide as a community are we going to lose millions of dollars every year on it? Is it worth having the specialists and having the care, or should we send the children out of town? And that's something we need to decide as a community. Okay, we have to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the sports park with uh, the construction there, the county administrator, indigent defense, so a lot of issues coming up. You're watching ABC 7 Extra. Remember, if you have comments or questions, you can reach us by phone, 496-1775, email abc7extra at kba.com, at Twitter, at Maria G ABC 7 or with the hashtag ABC 7 Extra. We'll be right back. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra. We're joined by the two newest county commissioners, David Stout and Andrew Haggerty. I want to talk about the sports park. Uh, millions of dollars invested, many years invested too. Still not completed. At one point, the architect and uh, the contractor were blaming each other. The county now trying to recover some damages. Uh, you, you can't help but draw the comparison. The city built a state-of-the-art ballpark in about a year. Granted, it's apples and oranges. It's not the same thing. They had a private partner. But nonetheless, I think the sports park exemplifies this real big flaw in the county, this dysfunction, a lack of consistent project management. Well, I, you know, I, I, it's, it's very lamentable that, that, that it's, gotten, it's gotten to this point. Um, uh, you know, again, we're not privy to all the information, all the legal information that's, you know, that, that, uh, uh, that the other commissioners uh, have been um, up to this point. But, you know, I think that these types of issues are exactly why we needed a county administrator. Um, this is the type of, uh, of problem that, that I think having an, an administrator um, can, can definitely, you know, help out with. Yeah, and, and the hope is that a new county administrator can help prevent these kinds of situations. What do you foresee? I mean, a really unique situation for you all. You're going to be the first commissioners that are going to go in um, with the, the, the newly hired county administrator. What do you foresee? With you that? know, it's, it's going to be interesting. We're learning our jobs while we're teaching him his job. So it's going to be interesting for, for definitely the two of us. Um, you know, I think a lot of the issue, though, with the sports park, you know, going back, uh, the county is not really set up to be in parks as well as the city is, and I think that's a lot of the problem. We have, uh, you, you talk about scheduling and maintenance, they just did a huge building on the west side, the new northwest annex, came in early under budget. So the, the problem, I think, is more we're just not in the, the parks business well. And uh, I mean, so, but, but what do you do? You don't provide these qualities? No, no, not at all. That's, that's not the problem. Uh, it's just something that we need to make sure we're narrowly watching, doing a better job of watching, and uh, making sure that they're in the areas that they need to be in and we're not overstepping our bounds because it, we don't have nearly the park's uh, staff as the city does, I don't right. believe. Um, but I, I do, I, I was not a fan of the administrator for, for certain reasons. I've talked about them many times on the campaign trail. We now have one. We need to make sure that he's successful and this is definitely something where the administrator does need to be watching and making sure stuff is done on time and we're not having these issues 
you know, the big issue is, is the blame game that was created. You've got the architect saying that he, the contractor did everything wrong. You've got the contractor saying the plans were wrong. We still don't know who's right or wrong. It's been my entire campaign, a fight between the two of them. Of he said, he said what it's about. So it's about at least the last 18 months, nothing's been done because they've been pointing fingers. And I don't even know if an administrator could have fixed that problem or not. I think that's more to poor hiring of either the contractor or the uh, the architect. So we need to figure out there. Okay, we have a phone call from Joe in Central. Joe, what's your comment or your question? Yes, I would uh, appreciate it if we get off the subject of the uh, children's uh, hospital and um, ask the uh, newly elected commissioners their viewpoints on some of the other challenges that the uh, county is facing. I would appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Well, we're off the subject. We've been off the subject for an entire commercial break. But thank you so much, Joe, for your comment. Uh, the Texas Indigent Defense Commission found unfair practices in the way El Paso district and county judges appoint private defense attorneys to represent those who can't afford a lawyer. Uh, the report confirmed concerns that were raised by Commissioner Vince Pettis, essentially that the judges were appointing cases to a small pool of lawyers. Um, some could say, could argue that, that it exemplified some sort of favoritism. Um, in some cases, defendants who requested an attorney never got one. The Council of Judges saying they've already improved the system, um, but we know that, that that was prompted by Commissioner Pettis' uh, attempts at trying to reform this. Uh, how do you tackle uh, the issues with the criminal justice system as a commissioner? Because, I mean, they're obviously a separate body of government. And I think that's where the negotiation has to definitely come into play. Because, exactly, we, we as commissioners have power of the purse strings as far as budgetary items go, but we don't have the ability to tell people how they can do their jobs. And that's the difficulty that comes into play. I think um, with the study, I think the judges definitely realized that some mistakes were being made and they're being rectified. Uh, working to try to bring something in to, to fix the issue because that issue is starting the jail issue of them being in the, in the jail longer than they need to be. Right. So it's a, it's a domino effect. Um, but doing a good job of working with them negotiation wise and, and talk, talking to them face to face and working things out. Um, how do you how do you, you know, deal with that? It's, so it's a, I mean, it's delicate because to the to the credit of the council of judges, you know, I think they started they started working on on, on the problem um, even before the, the the audit actually came in or the results from the audit came in. Um, I think I think that Commissioner Perez, um, you know, I, I think his intentions um, were definitely in the right place. You know, um, you know, you look at you look at this uh, our, this county and our, and our jail system and how costly it is to taxpayers. You know, it's nearly a quarter of our of our of our county's budget, and and um, he's he's looking for for ways to make it more efficient. And I think that we should all work together, the judges, the commissioners' court, and other departments within the county to do that. And 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 if some changes need to be made, then then we need to then we should look at making those changes. Um, you know. Uh, not everybody's going to be perfect. Not everybody's going to going to um, have all the answers, but but I think that we should be open to working together and 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 making the county the best it can be. And I think and I think that <coughs> you know uh, uh, that's this is exactly what Commissioner Pettis is looking at. You know, trying to to reduce the amount of time that people are staying are spending in jail, um, especially when they're when they're first being booked. Um, you know, with look, looking at a new. Um, um, uh, Office to 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 process the 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 folks that are being yeah. arrested. Speaking of the jail, you know, big big part of your budget. I mean, it's huge. In fiscal year 2014, the county is slated to spend 71 million dollars on the jail system per capita. That's the highest in the state, highest than than even uh, Bear County per capita. Uh, county commissioners, though, renegotiated a contract with the sheriff's union. It's bound to save taxpayers about $25 million over the next four years. Um, but it, it, it's still a huge expense. How do you streamline the jail system? I think the issue there, um, and I give the sheriff a lot of credit, he's done a great job of stopping overtime, which was a huge budgetary line item uh, over the last six months. But a lot of it is our jail, downtown jail, is very 
is it built not the way they should be now. It takes a lot more manpower to run them than, the, than our uh, east side facility. So there's a jail study being, going, that being done now to decide what's the best use of the jail. Is it to close a couple floors, get a different one? Because we spend so much money because our downtown jail is in bad need of repair. It's built in, in a way that requires a lot more guards. Right. And so I think this, when the study comes out, it's going to do a lot to fix some of those issues. Okay, we have to take a break. Um, we have an email. I'm glad to see another Republican elected to the commissioner's court. I know many members of the Haggerty family, so we're going to talk about your late uncle when we come back. So stay with us. You're watching ABC7 Extra. You can call, email, or tweet us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to ABC 7 Extra. We're joined now by the two newest county commissioners. We have an email from Roscoe. He says, I'm glad to see another Republican elected to commissioner's court. I know many members of the Haggerty family, and this young man will serve as well as have the others. The Democrats seem to think there is a bottomless pit of money in this broke county. It's good to see new blood on the court. That's from Roscoe in the Lower Valley. How often do you think you'll find yourself in a decision thinking, how would my uncle Dan handle this? Well, I, I went into this race very early on saying I'm not Dan Haggerty. I'm not pretending to be Dan Haggerty. I'm, uh, my name's Andrew Haggerty. That being said, I was raised by his older brother. So definitely there's similar views. We have uh, been told s similar humor, but I don't take it nearly to the, to the degree <laughs> he did. Um, you know, uh, I put a picture in my office uh, of Dan, one that was from the Apostle Times, to, to rem remember him because he was, he was a mentor, a friend. And a, a business partner at one time, but it's not what would Dan do. It's it's what would the people want because that's why we have our meetings. That's why we do things. And uh, you know, I, I've been told early on going into politics, do what feels right, and you'll probably get do all right. Do do it for the right reasons, and that's the key. And it's not I'm not going in there trying to fill Dan's term and, and doing what he would do. I'm going in there doing what I think would be best based on how I was raised. And I was raised by his older brother, who so it's a lot of the similar views. I want to ask you about this philosophy of governing. You say, you know, do what the people would want. But, but there's this, a, a different philosophy that you were elected by the people, but there's this idea of building a constituency around an idea that may not be popular. I mean, sometimes the right thing isn't what the people want. So how do you navigate that? We'll start with you, David. Well, you know, I mean, you, you always want to try to respect the, the people who you represent and their, and their views, of course, and, and you're not always going to please everybody either because, um, you know, there's always going to be disagreement. Um, and, and you, but I, I, I do think that, um, that sometimes the, the, maybe the more unpopular uh, decision may be the best, and, and I think that it's incumbent upon us as elected officials to, to look at that and, and, and Way it, put that on a balance and, and, and weigh it and, and make sure that, that we are making the, the correct decision. Um, it's hard and, and, and uh, it, it's going be it's going to make some people mad, I think at some point, but um, we're here for the people. Um, we're here because of the people, uh, and a lot of times we need to make decisions that are difficult. Uh, you know, uh, County Judge Veronica Escobar, very strong presence on the court, very, very involved, um, a very ambitious vision for, for the county, one of reform, one of investment. Uh, what areas do you believe that you'll find yourself dissenting from when it comes to her vision? Um, I foresee myself being more, uh, not to quote the email, but more of the breaks, more of the, if we keep doing this, I've got no problem with progress, but it's got to be at a steady pace. We've got to make sure we're not over, overspending, uh, especially since everyone's about to pay their property taxes. I think they're all on the same page. I hear, hear a lot of complaints come property tax payment time. Is you know we, we keep building and building and building, but someone's got to keep paying for it. And we've just got to remember, and I think that goes back to the, to the what you talked about before. Yes, I was voted to make the decision, but when we cut ourselves off and think we're the only ones that are right, that's a dangerous thing you got to be at too. You got to remember, it's not five people in a room. You're representing all of the people in El Paso, the ones that voted for me and the ones that didn't, and uh, so you've got to you got to take that into consideration. To, to sit no. there and. Right. Now, th there is this argument, though, that, that the, the county budget has been pretty lean 
and that if, if you want to provide services, they're, they're costly at times. What, what are your thoughts, David? Where, where do you think you'll find yourself dissenting from um, the majority of the court? Well, I think um, there's always going to be the opportunity to dissent. And, and I, I think, uh, for the most part, um, the court gets along. I mean, uh, yeah. in, 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 in my opinion, it's, it's usually on, on the bigger issues that are, that, that you know, for example, um, uh, the certificates of obligation, um, th those types of things. And I, I, you know, I think that, that we should, you know, look at, at having the leanest court we can. Um, but I also, I also believe that services are important and people need to understand that, you know, to, to have the, the, you know, the, the health care or to have um, quality of life, money needs to be spent. Right. Well, uh, my director is telling me we're out of time. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Appreciate Thank it. you for staying up. Thank, Thank you. you, David. And thanks for watching ABC7 Extra. We hope you found this informative and helpful, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.